What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we're going to talk about the top three places that I would live in Arizona. Um, recently, I've been traveling all around the Caribbean. I'm right now in Puerto Rico, but as I've had time to reflect, you know, sometimes distance makes the heart grow fonder, or in this case, uh, gives you an opportunity to reflect and think about where you want to go or what you want to do. So I've recently rented out my home in Mesa, and so now that I've done that, uh, it gives me freedom to go where I want. Well, Arizona is my home base, as you guys know. Um, I've also been around uh, the Caribbean. I've looked at places out here to see where I could potentially, uh, you know, also consider a second place to call home. I uh, haven't exactly found that right now. I'm in Puerto Rico, and I don't think I would go here, uh, just mostly because it's so expensive. It's like Miami prices in Puerto Rico. In fact, if I was to compare Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, I would take Dominican Republic pretty much nine times out of ten. Uh, that's not a knock on Puerto Rico. It just means that, you know, it is what it is. It, if I'm looking for something that I prefer, that's that's my opinion. Uh we can get into all that, and I plan to do a live stream on uh, Island Hopper TV to talk about the best places I would consider living in the world uh, here in 2024, but this is about Arizona, so I put that preface out there because I'm not just some guy who, uh, you know, watches shows and then makes, a, makes an opinion about it. I actually have been to these places and spent considerable amount of time uh, going around Arizona, obviously, but also around the world, so I have... Um, data, which allows me to measure things against other things. Uh, obviously, my opinion, it might not be your opinion. It depends on what you like. Like, I was even thinking about, you know, maybe I should set it up to where I should do phone calls where someone can ask me directly based on my experience, because I think I'm in a unique situation where I have this information and I have this experience, but I want to get it out there. The only thing is when I do these live streams or when I do these uh videos, they're not tailored to everybody's individual needs because really there's a lot of factors that go into it. Some people are looking for uh, budget-friendly values, right? So more bang for your buck, more value. One of the things about the United States, generally speaking, it's very expensive. Um, for me, I like luxury experiences, but I don't like to pay, you know, $750 to $1,000. Right now, the world of travel if you want a luxury hotel, you're going to be paying well over $500 pretty much anywhere. That's not just in California or Florida. Uh, if you come down to the Caribbean, you could be looking at anywhere between $2,000 to $3,000 per night just for a luxury experience on one of these islands. On average, you'd be looking at over $500 a night for a Hilton or a Marriott, just even a basic. I mean, if you that's if you want to be on a beach. If you want to be inland, you could maybe get it for $270. Uh, but this is the case in California. This is the case in Florida. But here in Arizona, or since we're speaking about Arizona in particular, um, you know, Arizona has gotten really expensive. I mean, there was a time where homes, you could get a home for uh, around $200,000, a two to three bedroom. Nowadays, you couldn't get a two to three bedroom house for $200,000, even if you tried, right? Like you're not even, you know, it used to be people would go to these uh, for sales or these uh these opportunities where people cl were closed out of their house and you could get a really good deal on a fixer upper it seems like those days are gone i mean if people are still doing that i would like to know how and where but uh you know in mesa right now seventeen hundred dollars a month for a basic two-bedroom uh condo right that's just for a rental hey what's going on water tiger mark graves running at altitude let me know who's tuning in here uh, if you guys can see me and hear me loud and clear let me know also thank you to everyone who's already smashed up the likes we got 14 likes already so thank you to all you guys who are doing that so the way i've basically broken this down is three specific regions and they're all valleys so that's making it pretty easy right because in arizona let's be real the valley of the sun uh there's you know two suns in a valley and then so is the Verde Valley. Those are the three main areas that I'm going to talk about. But inside of each one of those valleys, those are the three main areas that I would be focusing my attention on. Where's the best place to live in the Valley of the Sun, which is Phoenix? Where's the best place to live around Tucson, Oro Valley area, right? That kind of idea. And then you have the Verde Valley, which is Cottonwood all the way up to Sedona and everything in between. So it's going to be dependent on variables, right? Do you want rural life? Do you want to be out there where you can see animals coming up into your bird feeder or your 
uh, pond, drinking out of your pond, eating food off of your front porch, uh, where the coyotes may roam and, you know, come into your backyard looking for your cat or dog. Maybe some people would say, why would I want to do that? Well, people like to be around the nature. Some people would say, I don't want to be around anywhere where there's going to be rattlesnakes. So I'm going to kind of break it down based upon that. So thank you to everyone who's already smashing up the likes. We got Carol, we got Reb, we got Desert Rat. He says, there, they were to make 100,000 new homes in Buckeye and they have stopped due to water shortage. Yeah, I don't know. The water shortage situation is quite unique. Um, I don't know. They, they hide behind these political things. There's politics behind a lot of it. They say it's one thing, you know, but then it could be their low budget, but then they blame it on something else. Arizona is was supposed to prove to the federal government that they had enough water supply to last 100 years. That was under Governor Ducey. They proved it, so they were able to get a massive building boom. Then all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, they say, oh, we have a water shortage. But if you go up to SRP and you go up to where the uh, SRP reservoirs are, you know, Roosevelt is filled to the brim. Canyon Lake filled to the brim. Saguaro, Apache filled to the brim. You go up to Verde, especially this time of year after all of the rain and the snow that they've had up in the high country in Arizona, northern Arizona. People are like, well, we need the snow to stop. I mean, you guys have gotten so much snow up in northern Arizona that it's a lot of snow these days, right? Um, Z says, got my four-bedroom house in Tempe for 104000 in 2013. How the heck did you do that? How did you get a $104,000 house in Tempe in 2013? That must have been like, I mean, 2008 was the bottom. I know that 2011, 2012 was a great time to buy in Tempe, but $104,000, that's crazy for a four-bedroom. Right now, that same house has got to be around four fifty dollars to five hundred, dollars because I was looking for houses in uh, Tempe, and these houses are very old. They're not built very good. I mean, you might even have a problem with asbestos if you're buying a house in Tempe. Uh, he says, Tempe Town Lake is always filled. Yes, it is. Um, and that's an indicator of how much water they have in the SRP. Now, it could be a different story for the Colorado River, but we only get like 20 to 30 percent of our water from the Colorado River. So even then, majority of our water comes from our aquifers in Phoenix in particular, and then SRP, Salt River Project. But again, all of those are two of those three are filled to the brim. Uh, so they do water allotments with the Colorado River and they split it up. Um, someone says, how much cost to build a 900 square foot house in Arizona, 900 square foot? Well, I mean, at that case, they have homes like that on Amazon. You could get like a 900 foot Amazon house that you just basically comes in on a big truck. You buy it for like 15,000 or may, I don't know how much it is. So you'd have to look it up, but you could literally type in Amazon right now, buy a house on Amazon and it comes with like board, like windows and all that stuff. And it's like a plug and play. You just kind of put it together like a desk that you would buy from Ikea or something. And it's supposedly pretty good. Uh, but, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, do you want to build a real house? I would say probably $45,000 in materials on the low end. Uh, so if you're buying property for 35000 you know, you got to usually if you're getting a $35,000 uh, piece of property in somewhere like Rimrock or $40,000 for half an acre or something, you're going to have to drill a well. I mean, so, you know, you've got these factors. It just depends on where, right? Where are you trying to go? <laughs> and, and that's why I was thinking about doing those phone calls. I don't know how much I would charge for that. How much do you guys think a phone call with that information would be worth? Uh, and the reason I do that is because, you know, if I just make it for free, everyone's going to be calling me and my phone's going to be going off the hook. If I put a barrier to entry in there where it's like $50 for information and, if you're anything like me, I've thought about paying uh, people just for information. It's kind of like I pay this one legal website $75 just for a phone call because I had a question about legal. I also have this service called Prepay Legal, Legal Shield. Anytime I have a question, I pay them. I pay them like $40 a month. But anytime I have a question, I can you know ask them a question. So for someone from out of state, if they have a question, I was thinking maybe like $50, $25. I have no idea. But it would be a way to help people, but also you know something for me to do. Uh, that, you know, adds to the channel's uh, opportunities to go out and film more videos. You know, more income for me equals more videos for you guys. So it could be a win-win for everybody, the person who's looking for the information and the person who's not. But uh, I don't know how much you guys think that would be worth for someone who's out of the state and just looking for information where they're like, hey, I've got 
this, 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 this. I don't want to charge too much because if I overcharge and then I give them bad information, they'll be like, you suck. <laughs> you know, so it would it'd have to be something where I would, you know, give my best op, uh, opinion and then, you know, we'll see. Uh, but prefab homes, Z says three, 30K to 50K. I mean, Elon Musk built a prefab at Boca Chica down in uh, Starbase in South Texas. I went down there and they have a whole bunch of prefab homes right there in Boca Chica for St SpaceX. And uh, he lived in it. And I mean, he's a billionaire. So, I mean, prefab homes are kind of like the way of the future. I mean, for me, <laughs> I was thinking like, man, I would just go down to Costa Rica, live in one of those super sustainable like rainforests right there on a river and, you know, grow a farm or a bunch of fruit trees and have some chickens and some goats and some cows and call it a day, you know, be a ranchero, a caballero down in Costa Rica. Right. That's like my dream. I mean, that's one of them, but uh, we'll see. I mean, it's seems like a good idea because they have a good tax plan, but that's for Island Hopper TV. For those of you who follow me over there, that's where you'd get that information. But let's dial in the three places in Arizona in particular. So Verde Valley. So in Verde Valley, again, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want beautiful high-end stuff, you're going towards Sedona. Sedona, Oak Creek. Sedona and Oak Creek, Schnebly Hill, that whole area probably the best area in Arizona, but also the best area in uh, the Verde Valley to be just because it's so scenic. And yeah, they got like wild deer. They've got lots of javelinas. They've got uh, all sorts of wildlife around there. It's very beautiful, but it's expensive. You get what you pay for. But if you want to be close to Sedona and you don't want to pay those top prices, go look at a place like Cornville. Look at a place like Cottonwood. Look at a place like uh, uh, Clarkdale around that area. Look at Camp Verde, or if you really want a nice place, but without breaking the bank and you feel like doing a real off-grid project, go to Rimrock. Okay. Now, if I was to go to Phoenix Metro area, where would I go? Well, I've had to think about this. Like, where's the best place in Phoenix Metro? So if I go to Phoenix Metro and I want to be in the city, I'm going to Ahwatukee. I think Ahwatukee is centrally located. It's still right up against the South Mountain, and it's a really nice area. Um, it's connected to the uh, 202. It's also connected to the I-10. So take a look at Ahwatukee if you want to be right in the heart of Phoenix. But if you want to be on the outskirts, you don't mind having some wildlife, possibly rattlesnakes in your backyard. Well, then I would say take a look at uh, northeast or I'm sorry, east. Let's say far east uh, Mesa area. That's kind of up by East Mark, but a little bit higher than that. And then if you go out towards Gold Canyon, Apache Junction, right up next to the Superstition Mountains. The closer you are to the Superstition Mountains on e in East Phoenix, if you get that view, that's great. Thank you to the 33 people who smashed up the likes. Thank you so much. Okay, so you have um, East Phoenix next to the Superstitions. The closer you are, the better. I wouldn't necessarily recommend being anywhere in Mesa. Mesa is just, there's not much vibrance in Mesa, Mesa to be honest with you. It's, it's kind of expensive. Um, it's, it, there's a circle K on every corner. There's a tire store on every corner. There's a Walgreens on every corner. There's a Burger King and a McDonald's. And, you know, it's just not really that great. It's, it's right in the heart of the city. I mean, if things ever went crazy and there was a zombie apocalypse, the last place you want to be is Mesa, in my opinion, <laughs> Mesa or Glendale, those would be two places you just don't want to be, but outskirts of Mesa are all right. Uh, I would say North Phoenix. Uh, Anthem, Desert Ridge, Cave Creek, Carefree, New River, all of that would be a nice place to live, but it all depends on your budget. Um, if you go out towards the west side, I would say Estrella Mountain, anywhere in the Estrellas is a really nice place. I, I would say you could also go southeast, east Phoenix, like south, southeast, which is like Queen Creek, uh, Santan Valley, although you're really far out there, as long as you don't have any need to get to uh, the Cardinals games or the Diamondbacks games or anything like that, Southeast Phoenix should work. But if you want to be right next to like the Diamondbacks, the airport, all that, you'd probably want to be aiming for Ahwatukee. Now, if we go down south towards um, Tucson, so Tucson uh, around Oro Valley area is really nice, but I wouldn't actually take Oro Valley. I would take the Catalina foothills. The closer you are to the Catalinas at the foothills level is a very nice area to be. You could do Oro Valley, but again, it's right next. It, it all wraps around the uh, Catalina foothills. So Oro Valley, Catalina foothills. Now, I wouldn't want to be in the heart of uh, Tucson. 
So anywhere around the foothills of the mountains, even going out towards Tanca Verde, something like that, Vail, out that way. But if you go to South Tucson, there's some areas that I really, really like. This would probably be really high on my list. Tubac. I like Tubac. I like uh, Sal Rita. That whole area is very nice next to Madera Canyon, a little bit closer to Madera Canyon going up in that direction. That's Southern Arizona area I really, really like. And I would suggest that to people who are looking for more peace and quiet. Um, but yeah, if you're going to be in Tucson, you're aiming for Tucson, you want to be around Oro Valley or Catalina Foothills if you're looking for the good life. If you're looking to save a little bit of money, uh, Tucson, you can do that, but you get what you pay for down there because it can be hit or miss. Uh, Water Tiger says, New River has a drug problem. That's a whole subject all in of itself. I mean, the amount of drug pro that, you know, we posted that one uh, comment on our community tab about the Rock saying that Arizona has got the highest rate of drug usage in the country. And a lot of people, even on this channel, got upset. But I can tell you, as someone who's from Arizona, born and raised, the amount of people that I've known who have dealt with drug addiction, like people who come from well-off families who get sucked into drugs, uh, you know, these drugs can vary anywhere from, you know, I'm not going to say the words because I don't know how YouTube would feel about it, but you get the idea. I mean, you have the big one is meth. I mean, that's that's a terrible one that just runs rampant across Arizona. I, I don't know which one's the worst right now, but I would have to say it's that one. There's even a, a Instagram channel uh, or Instagram page where the guy literally interviews people off the streets. You guys have probably seen it. Maybe you know what it's called, but these are young people. Who, have any, who barely even graduated high school. They're 22, 23, 24, and they're junkies on the streets. People who are, you know, fresh-faced, totally able-bodied, but they're dealing with the addiction demons, the, the demons of addiction. And this is in Arizona, in the United States. I don't see this kind of addiction anywhere else in the world. I mean, I can't think of a country on earth right now that has the drug addiction at the level that the United States has. And the first thing that comes to mind is America is really struggling with soul. We don't have a soul. We don't have an identity anymore. It's kind of been ripped out of our country. And alongside the fact that we don't have soul, the, the value of everything is through the roof. So you don't have any fun ducats to go out and have fun. And then you don't really have any soul to hold you together when you can't go out and have fun because everyone's been fragmented. They've been broken apart from their families. You know, they're watching TV. People, when they get off work, they just sit in front of a TV on their couch. How do I know? Because that's the lifestyle. That's what we do. I mean, if you don't have kids playing sports, going out and doing water park stuff and keeping them active, most people, they don't know what to do. I mean, they watch murder documentaries uh, on Friday nights. I mean, this is their source of entertainment. It's gotten pretty bad. I mean, and, you know, that alcohol and then they get bored with that lifestyle and then they turn into these to drugs. And, you know, people are going to deny this and they're going to say, oh, no, it's not the case. That's a lie. The Rock was lying or um, I'm lying, you know. But if you lived in Arizona long enough, you have had to have seen it. Scottsdale's got its own little problem with white powders. OK, anyone who says they don't uh, has never gone out partying in downtown Scottsdale. And it's known for that. Uh, North Phoenix, North Northeast Phoenix, Northwest Phoenix, I should say, has an issue with yellow powders. Central Phoenix has an issue with all three and syringes. So it's it's quite bad. It's quite bad. Tucson has that same problem. Um, little Danny says, I literally go to work during the weekend, the week and literally do not do stuff in the recliner all weekend. Yeah, I mean, that's not normal. That's by design, though. But they've they've engineered our society to where it's kind of like house arrest. It's voluntary house arrest. Like people are now volunteering to be house arrested and stay in their house and the thing is, they don't have anywhere to go. Like if you wanted to go out and enjoy yourself, you have to get in your car. But if you're going to go to a pub or a bar, it's going to be really expensive. And then you're going to have drinks, but you can't drive. So now it's like, OK, I got to pay for an Uber. I got to pay for a taxi. And it's kind of far away. It's not convenient. Whereas like in some of these cities I go to, you've got everything like within walking distance. Well, Phoenix is just so spread out. I mean, all cities in America are like this. Even here in Puerto Rico, I'm, I'm like, man. Every everywhere requires me to get into an Uber or drive somewhere. And, uh, you know, you guys, Americans who've never traveled outside the United States, they've accepted this as normal. This is just normal. So when you it's kind of like uh, 
a tiger that grows up in a cage. That's all they know. That's all they know. But tiger that was outside of the cage, that was free range, able to roam around the jungles and stuff. And then you put him in the cage, he's going to be angry because he's like, he knows what life is out, which what life is like outside of the cage. Well, Americans are just growing up inside the cage. So they think this is normal, you know, just growing up in the city. I, I met, I meet a lot of people in the United States now and they say, um, well, for one, Americans have a reputation of being small minded, not very well traveled. How do I know this? Because I'm an American. I've been accused of this because, oh, they'll say, oh, thinking like a typical American, uh, you not well cultured, haven't left the country. I'm like, well, I've been to 86 countries. So, I mean, I'm not like your typical uh, person, um, but this is the rap that we have, you know, that we're small minded, not very cultured. Well, that's not a problem. That's fine. I mean, being you know, America is a huge country. A lot of Americans don't need to travel very far because we're a huge country. I and mean, we've got Yellowstone, we've got Montana, we've got um, Yosemite. That's just in the West, right? We've got the Rockies. Then you go out East, you got the Appalachians, you've got the interior, the Midwest, you've got all of this stuff, the Great Lakes, Florida. So Americans, it's kind of like each state is its own country, right? But it's all part of the United States. So Americans don't typically feel this need to go outside of the country because they can easily roam around without a passport to all these different beautiful places. So a lot of them haven't ever left the United States, but they have this worldview that is very centric to the United States. And then when people from other countries see that, they're like, wow, this person's really small minded. They don't think outside the box. So we have this reputation, right? But it's not a big deal. It is what it is. I mean... Um, I think it's great. I think, I think it's okay. I think Americans are still some of the best people you'll ever come across. Like I trust Americans more than anyone else. I mean, if I needed to get something done, I'm going to hire, if I needed to get the job done the right way, I'm going to hire Americans because we just, I don't know. The mentality is just really good. Okay. At least people from my generation and, and up, I would say, uh, gen X and up millennials and up. Someone said, when foreigners visit America, they are typically amazed at how big our country is. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have a huge country. I mean, it's I think it's bigger than the EU uh, if you take all the European Union countries. But maybe the European Union would benefit from having like Poland and Scandinavia kind of putting it overboard. I don't know if the United States is bigger, but we have Alaska. We have Hawaii. We also have the territory of Puerto Rico. A lot of people don't realize Puerto Rico is a territory here. The only difference is. Uh, they don't pay taxes and they don't vote for the president. That's basically the only difference. I mean, but it's a, U a United States territory. You also have overseas territories like Guam. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm not interested in criticizing my country. I love my country. Uh, it says Rob, Reb. Um, traffic is really bad and they keep building. And the more pavement seems, the hotter it gets. Yeah, the, the pavement creates like a reflection from the sun that radiates up. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, black pavement asphalt is hotter than uh, ground with dirt and Palo Verde trees. <laughs> it, I mean, obviously. So, of course, there's a radiation that's coming up and making it hotter. And that's, it is what it is. I mean, that's like saying the surface, sur some surfaces burn and cook hotter than others. Uh, Deacon says, me too, just hate the leadership in D.C. I mean, that's, that's what De Deacon says. Um, 56 people smashed up the likes. We got 122 people watching. If you guys... Uh, let me know what you guys want to talk about on this one. We could keep talking about the subject that we're on right now, or if someone throws out some ideas, we can uh, change course uh, like an 18 wheeler on a dime. We can do it. <laughs> what is it? Three point turn, five point turn, 10 point turn, eight point turn. What do you want to do? Um, Kevin says, if you can't even stand to give constructive criticism to your country, that's when you're called a nationalist. Well, for one, I am a bit of a nationalist in the sense that I want our country to be very prosperous and economical. I, I know what you're saying, and I know you're not being condescending or rude to anyone in this chat. I get what you're saying. You're saying you got to be you got to have this uh, willingness to uh, take take feedback and grow. Right. And so, you know, that's that's absolutely right. I agree with you. Um, even me as a YouTuber. Right. Like I've got to be able to read the comments. I get people who say things like. Hey, you're doing great. Or I'll get people to say you're the dumbest person in the whole wide world. I can't believe you think that uh, Cottonwood is a good place to live. I mean, that's how someone would talk, right? They're like, oh, Phoenix is an absolute horrible place to live. It's the armpit of the country. And I can't believe you're telling people to move there. Or they'll say like, oh, Phoenix is amazing. I love 
Phoenix. So, I mean, everyone's got an opinion and I, I, I get it all the time on this channel. I mean, all I have to do is go onto my comments notification tab and I get tons of comments. I mean, even in this chat, we'll have comments from people who are saying positive things and negative things. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's all it all works together in a, in a, in a way that grows. Right. Bullhead was awesome, but that was years ago. Someone said I lived in Prescott the longest Sedona for a while. Want to live in Jerome for a summer. Tucson isn't fun for me. Neither is Tohono O'odham is 50 50. Quartzsite is not good in January. The only time I would ever want to be in Quartzsite would be January. So the fact that you're saying the Quartzsite's not good in January is like, oh, well, then I'm not ever going to Quartzsite. Um, I mean, maybe it's cold in the in the nighttime. Why would you not want to be in Quartzsite? It seems like Quartzsite's where all the RVs go up until about this time of year, maybe around like the end of April, people are getting the heck out of Quartzsite, maybe like mid uh may right with tsmc moving into uh phoenix what is the turmoil it has caused positive and negative so i don't really know yet about uh taiwan semiconductors uh positive or negative impact that's that's still something that's going to take years to develop i would say a positive would be more jobs obviously a negative would be um i don't know maybe if arizona people can't fill those jobs because of a lack of uh knowledge in that subject they have to import people from out of the country so they're bringing in people from out of the country who are actually taking the jobs from people from arizona so it doesn't have a positive impact and it drives up prices because when they come in from out of place other places it drives up prices uh skull valley is cool but tiny yeah skull valley i mean that's on the way to tucson right or, or not tucson uh prescott going past yarnell um skull valley it's it's a beautiful area i mean it's wickenburg north it's north east of wickenburg i would say um dirt x racer look into wyoming western nebraska for slower pace of life yeah i mean if you wanted slower pace of life cheaper living uh east wyoming nebraska uh up above uh oklahoma uh south dakota that's where you're going to find the cheap prices north dakota but you're going to deal with brutal cold winters. I mean, but if saving money was what you're into, then there it is. But it could be very, very, very boring there. Very boring. And if you don't have family that you can drive over to their house and throw a barbecue party or something with, you're just going to be like, I got to get out of that place. Miss um, Jennifer Jones, I grew up in Phoenix from 1975 to 1984. The best of memories. Oh, my gosh. Phoenix in the 90s? I couldn't think of a better place to be uh just phoenix in the 1990s it was just a magical place um around y2k something seemed to change no i would say around like 2008 after that first housing crunch in 2007 2008 something changed in phoenix it's like we lost our soul but then again that happened all across the country it's almost like the whole country lost its soul around 2007 2008 but you could say 2001 was the uh was the ticking time bomb that that broke the whole thing i don't know um i yeah i mean this idea about patriotism and nationalism what i'm i mean i don't think there's anyone in this chat right now who wants bad things to happen to the united states or the u.s economy or anything like that because that would be like self-hatred i mean anyone who wants the united states to fail or uh anything like that is crazy because they have no idea what the fallout from that would look like or feel like. I mean, depression, I mean, just bounce back to the 1920s uh, or the 1930s, early 1930s, the Great Depression, and you can see just how bad things can get. This is food shortages, um, no jobs. I mean, people losing all of their life savings. I mean, you don't want that to happen. Some people with debt, I guess if you have a society that's just filled with debt, People are like, well, it couldn't get any worse from here, so let's just recalibrate the system so they forget about how much I actually owe. I mean, that might be someone who would say they want the whole thing to collapse, but hopefully we don't get too many more people like that, although it seems like the country is going in that direction where people are just getting buried in debts. And these are people who are buried in debts and then still having to pay a ton in taxes. That just doesn't seem sustainable. Um, so... We'll see what happens uh, moving forward. I have someone at the uh, door. Come on in. <laughs> this is the housekeeping. You, I'll read some of your comments when you guys are uh, messaging here. But uh, who do we have here? Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
uh, stop this here, and then I'm going to go to Island Hopper TV and do a live stream over there. If you guys want to catch up with me there, see you over there on the next one. Thank you. Come on in.